Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today, as you can see, I'm going to be doing some stuff with water streams. So we're just going to go through how to use water streams to transport items. And that's going to be everything from inserting the items into the water stream to going up, down, around corners, lining them up with hoppers and everything of that sort. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we have to do is get the water into the water stream. So this is going to happen one of two ways. The first way is going to be the items just fall directly in, whether you're throwing them in or they're coming in from, say, some farm and then they're falling into an item stream. And then the second way is going to be they're in some sort of inventory or hopper pipe and you'll need to spit them out into the water stream using droppers. So for this first method, there's not much to it, but say you have some farm that's emptying into this area just as an example and you want to flow it into a single stream maybe you've got another one of these things over here and you've got layers going up maybe it's some sort of farm or something and they all drain into this central channel well if they get pushed off right here well first of all this would have to be open but if they get pushed off right here, then they're just going to land on this ice block and not be pushed anywhere. So you have a little dead space there. So the way you can fix that is if you take something like a half slab or probably a trap door would be better. And you come in here, just replace that with a trap door. And then if you take your fence gate or something, just something to stop the water from flowing backwards and it doesn't have a hitbox, you go like that and then take a water source. Let's get rid of this one here. Take a water source and place it up there and you'll see it flows down. Now all the items that are coming from this side will flow under the trap door and keep going along that water line. And all the ones that fall down and would normally fall on top of the ice now fall on top of this water source block and get pushed off into the water stream and keep going like that. So that's one good trick to know. And then over here we have a couple auto droppers that I've put together. And these first two are going to be Java only because they use QC. And then that last one works for anything. So in this first version here, let's get rid of these guys for now. Uh, it, this is probably my favorite just because it's small and compact, cheap. And if we throw some items in here, you can see that it spits them out real fast. However, there are a couple problems to this. Uh, since it spits them out so fast, it will outpace hoppers that are feeding into it. So if you just have a hopper like this and you put some items in, you see you get this jittering here. So let's get rid of that. Uh, and that's just because this observer clock on the top here operates twice as fast as the hopper feeding in. So one thing you can do, um, sometimes this glitches out for me, we'll see if it works here. But if you feed in from two sides, so we throw one in there and throw one in there. All right, let's uh, retry this. Yeah, see, uh, it will actually feed in fast enough. I don't know why, I think it's like a timing issue but it could still jitter, but if you want it to output this fast, you're going to need at least two feeding into it. So we'll stop that. Um, the nice thing about this one is you can take and face this dropper upwards. So let's see if I can... Oop, almost got it. Face it up like that, and then you can output it straight to like a bubble column, or say you're size restricted and you can't shoot it out the front, you can turn it like that. Uh, but you're always going to have the issue with having to have multiple things come in or just deal with the sound. Uh, this one over here is pretty much the same thing, but you'll see we've shifted it off to the back a little bit. And it's just reading through this solid block. And that lets us add this repeater here. And this repeater is just going to slow down the clock and let us feed at the same rate as a hopper. So if we grab a hopper here, uh, I'll just throw some in here just so we can see. It goes slower and to show that it works at hopper speed, go like that. And so it's just firing them as they get input by the hopper. And this up here, you can actually take and adjust the timing a little bit at least. Make it a little slower if you want. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you know. And then if you go all the way out like that, 
it will go even slower. And so once again, this can be fed in from both sides, but it's not necessary. Uh, one problem with this is you can't face it upwards because if you put water directly above it, then it will wash out this repeater. So that's kind of a drawback for this one. And you can see we slowed it down so it was actually taking a little longer. Anyway, then we've got a horizontal design. This will work on both Java and Bedrock. And we're using the new target block because we're in the 116 snapshot. So this one can also be faced up or to the side like so. Uh, you can technically face it down too, I suppose, uh, with any of these. And so this is just a comparator coming out, looping around, back into a repeater, and then into the target block. So we'll check this out. And this is going to be at hopper speed as well. And we can slow this one down by just increasing the repeater ticks. So I'll just show we can do that with a hopper. And that works perfectly at hopper speed. Right here we have kind of just a bunch of little examples worked into one contraption. So I've just used this for the input for all of my examples because I'm just going to be throwing them straight in here and we don't have to worry about in input speed. So we can see they're going along here. They get shot up. This is how you transfer to going upwards. There used to be a thing like back in 113 where they'd get stuck on the soul sand, but they've since fixed that. So unless you're in 113, it shouldn't be an issue. Then at the top here, you can see we've got this cobweb and items are getting shot up into the cobweb where they're grouping up and then they'll slowly fall back down, back into the water stream and keep going. So let's just look at that real quick. Throw some more in there. So you can see them getting shot up. They'll group up and slowly work their way down because as they group up, um, the smaller group size, which would be the one stacks coming in, will group to the larger stacks, which have been sinking down. So that's how this is able to keep going. If you do this in different ways or if you're serving them in clumps, then they might jump back up to the top because the incoming clump might be a little bit larger. And then if that happens, there might be a case where it'll never uh, reach the bottom. So uh, just keep that in mind. But for the most part, this is a pretty simple way to group things. And again, I don't have any glass along the edge here. You might want to do something like that if your upstream is a little bit shorter. Here, they've all been able to hit this wall and go up but sometimes if you're only going up like two or something they'll still be heading across as they're going up and then they'll shoot out and over and so then they'll oops so then they'll fall down on the edge here and get stuck but in this case I didn't need that so just something to consider uh, in the back here we've got different uh, typical ways of blocking things between water streams you can see I've been using the fence gates over here but these are other ones I see people use a lot, the half slabs, trapdoors, signs, and stuff. And they all have benefits and drawbacks. So with the half slabs and the trapdoors here, like if I were to take a half slab and put it in here, uh, this would cause problems because it's so close to the source of the block that the water is really high. And so things will be floating along the top. They'll hit this, and then they'll go down, and they won't have enough um, push from the water to get across the block uh, and that doesn't happen all the time but it's enough that it could be a problem so if we just fill this in here we'll see our things will get stuck they'll slowly float down and then they'll kind of bounce along the top of the water here and they'll probably hit this I'll just put a glass up there so they don't actually jump on top oh no oh, see those guys got in so in this pr particular configuration might not be an issue but uh, it is a, something to be concerned about, and you might end up having blocks get stuck uh, right on the end of the block. So then for signs, the, those work really well. The drawback is they have to be attached to something, and the text on them uh, can create some rendering lag, I believe client side only, but yeah. So that could be an issue. Um, pressure plates here cause uh, powering things if you've got like a really compact circuit 
you might uh, not want to use a pressure plate because it might power some other circuitry that you've kind of built around the water stream. So that's another concern. That's why I almost always use fence gates, just so I can be consistent because they work in all situations. They don't have any hitbox when they're open like this. The one problem with them is occasionally you forget to open them. So uh, you can build up your whole system, have a water stream buried somewhere, and it's just not working and you troubleshoot for hours and then find out that you just forgot to open the fence gate. So yeah, that's coming up, going down, basically just drop them. I've got these bars in here because I'll show you something in a second here. But yeah, you just drop them down into another water stream over and down again. And so what these bars are here for are to line the items up roughly in the center of the block. So they kind of come along here and let's see, F3B, we can show hitboxes. And if we throw some more in here, all right, just keep throwing more. It's making a lot of noise. Um, but we can watch the hitboxes. You can see the little blue lines are their facing direction because apparently items have that. But you can see the little white hitboxes on them. And they'll come along, hit the edge of this, go down. They're kind of centered here. Hit the next one, go down. And this way we can line them up to go inside of um, things like this. I don't know why you'd ever want to do this, but maybe this is something that is needed. So take those out of there. Anyway, one other thing to note is that hoppers also have this sort of interior thing. So if we break that, we can see the hit boxes there, the little white bits, are actually sitting inside of the hopper's hit box, and that will actually cause problems. So if we look over here, this is like the standard way, um, or at, at least the way that everybody used to do it, where you just run the water stream right on top of the hoppers here. And the problem with this is just that. Sometimes the items can fall inside of the hopper's hitbox and then they get stuck. Say you're sorting things over here and say your first thing, the, the item is supposed to go buy a few of them before it gets to the one that's sorting it, but they might fall in here and then they'll get stuck there and the water can't push them out and then more items come and they group up and they get stuck and get stuck and get stuck and eventually they'll end up despawning so you're going to be losing items that way so that's kind of why um, we've moved uh, over to different systems over here um, another thing you can do to fix that is just make sure all the items are aligned along the wall before they go across because then they'll be sitting on the edge of the hitbox of the hoppers but yeah, another problem with this system is that it is not infinitely tileable. So you get to eight out and then you're going to have to add this gap because you have to put a break in the water so you can add another source block going out and prevent it from flowing backwards. Um, but that also means that there's no water pushing it over here. So you have to use ice underneath, which means you can't use a hopper. So that's another reason why you'll see a lot of... Um, people building things where they have this ice path right next to a hopper path. And there are some concerns about this, but we'll get back to that in a minute. First, I want to come over here and just kind of quickly show you how to fill up these vertical columns with source blocks. There's typically two ways of doing this. Uh, the first way is to kind of take and fill this all with um, ice blocks, normal ice blocks like that. And then you're going to take a pick, come back, and I'm in creative mode, but you'd basically just start from the top and break your way down, and they would all turn into source blocks. You'd get to the bottom and not dig out the soul sand, uh, but you get to the bottom, and then the soul sand would create a bu bubble column and shoot you all the way back to the top. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. This is kind of my preferred method over here, and that is to use um, kelp blocks and then you just need one water source. So we take a water bucket, you put it in the top, then you grab some kelp, again, go down to the bottom, plant it on some dirt, and then just swim back to the top. And that will convert everything to a source block. And you just gotta jump down here, take out the sand or the uh, whatever you planted it on and put your soul sand back on there. And that will create your bubble column. All right, so heading back over here, uh, as I said, this is kind of the typical way of doing it. However, there's a lot of um, 
tricky bits about doing this and I've seen it confuse a lot of people because you have to actually align the items very precisely between the ice and the hoppers. So if you're too much on the hopper side, when you get to this gap, the item won't be gliding on the ice, so it will come to a stop and you'll have the same problem you had with that system over there. And, and if you have the item too far on the ice side, then it won't be able to be pick up to, or picked up by the hoppers. So to line these items up is kind of tricky. And I've got four different scenarios over here that kind of use different methods of lining items up. So you see we've got our ice and our hoppers here. And in this example, we have the water running over the ice. So uh, there's basically two things that we're going to be looking at. Uh, one is what or which row essentially the water is running on top of. Sometimes it'll run on top of the ice. Sometimes it'll run on top of the hoppers. And then uh, based on this bend direction, are the hoppers on the outside or the inside of the ice? So that gives us four different situations, each of which have different solutions. So here we have our input and what's going to happen. We'll put our items in here. They'll shoot. They'll run into these honey blocks, which don't have a full hitbox. So that will line it up so that they're partially over. You can see as the hitboxes kind of travel over, they're kind of barely over this uh, hopper right here. And so they'll be able to travel along and go in here. And we're noticing another issue that I'll get to eventually. But uh, you see some of them then get sucked up. And that's because we're outputting at a rate faster than hoppers can intake. So I'll tell you how to solve that in a little bit. But yeah, so for this one, you're just going to have the items shoot against some honey blocks. Now these can actually be chests as well. Like so and that will work just the same but honey is a little cheaper so i tend to go with that for this configuration and then over here we've kind of got just the opposite we've still got the ice in this row and the hoppers on this side but now we're going to be running the water along the top of the hoppers and based on your designs there might be some constraints that um, basically force you to do one or the other of these that's why it's kind of Good to know both so for here we're going to have the items come out just like before and they're going to run into the chest but this time we're going to waterlog the chest so now that we can waterlog chests we can have a source block here which will then push the items along and you'll notice i've been using panes you can use something else whatever it is so long as it's not a full block in fact um yeah Anything that basically doesn't go right to the edge because you have to allow the items to slide along here. And if I was ever to add something like that, then they would get caught and wouldn't be able to keep going. So I guess we'll just leave that. Anyway, so over here, we got two more examples. And this is just flipped around. So that instead of the hoppers being on this side, they're now on this side. If we throw items in here, it'll shoot them out. And now we see we have to hit these sea pickles. And this is a, a double stack of sea pickles. They can go up to four, but the double stack has the right hitbox, as you can kind of see there. I'm hovering over it. And that will line the items up. So they're mostly on the ice so that they are able to slide, but they are slightly overhanging the hoppers, as you can kind of see on the end here and that lets the hoppers pick them up. And once again, they're kind of flowing past where they should be going in because we're outputting too fast. So in this configuration, you want to use a C pickle, or rather two C pickles. And then if we switch where the water goes over, so we switch it from going over the ice to going over the hoppers again, then we have to use the hitbox of an anvil. So we'll just throw some in here see it go out once again you'll see it's mostly over the ice but a little bit over the hoppers and this is what will give us the proper alignment for this situation here 
and the ones that kind of shoot along the back you do have to have two of them here because this little diagonal water will sometimes shoot them across fast enough so if they're coming along the right side here and they hit this diagonal it'll shoot them over and if you only have one of these then it won't line it up properly so you need two here and that's why we had two back here as well right like so all right so that's how you're going to line them up to go along the intersection between hoppers and an ice path and then you can continue this basically indefinitely um, so that's what makes it useful but as you see we keep ending up with items getting stuck on the end here because they're output a little bit too fast so there's ways we can control how fast we did that S like if we look at the beginning here I kind of did that a little bit with this um, gosh what's it called Anyway, anyway, this guy, this web, yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, they grouped up here, and then they slowly fell out. And I haven't tested this in a super long term, but from my little bit of testing, it did seem like they were output at decently long intervals that they wouldn't over um, overflow the capacity of the hoppers to pick items up afterwards. So this might be a simple solution for you to use. To solve this problem but you're not always going upwards or able to throw them into one of those webs so this is another way to kind of shoot items around ice paths and these things are basically just going to be timed on a four game tick clock so if I throw some items in here we can see every well not game tick sorry uh, redstone ticks. so every four redstone ticks this will pull back and then shoot out and the items will kind of build up here as it's pushed out and then as soon as it pulls back they go into the zone it pushes them out and over and then this just lines them up again and you can see as they're going along here none of them are getting past this hopper right here one thing you have to note though is since we are using a fast clock here we are still going faster than the hopper can handle so if we take out this and put some more in here you'll see that it actually builds up in here because it's not able to go fast enough so this will slowly build up and if you hook this up to a farm or something or AF King eventually this whole thing will fill up and that means that you're just gonna have the same problem as before so in order to stop that you gotta kind of um, turn it into two outputs here to match the speed of the hoppers so you basically just do it this way where you have a hopper pointing to the side into another hopper pointing down into some chest and then this hopper below that one also pointing into the chest and that way you can drain items from this first hopper as fast as they're coming in so that's basically everything that I think you're going to need to know for most situations. There are some other great videos. I've linked them in the description below that I kind of used when I was doing research for this project. So check them out and let me know if I missed anything. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.